Minor League Baseball is one of the great unsung heroes of professional sports. I mean, unlike Major League Baseball or any other big mainstream North American professional league, Minor League Baseball often represents much smaller cities and media markets, which adds a sort of level of charm and intimacy with their home fields. Now, as with all levels of baseball, the stadiums that these teams play in are all unique and reflective of the communities that claim them. I mean, however, with 120 total Minor League Baseball teams, some of these stadiums really shine and punch way above their weight. So today I wanted to highlight some of the best of the best and kind of give a toast to the greatness that is Minor League Baseball. Now this isn't an end-all be-all comprehensive list, as I'd argue that every ballpark is great in its own right, so sound off in the comments which of these is your favorites and which ones deserve a shout out in a future stadium highlight list. First of all, what makes a ballpark great? I mean, for many it's the old-time charm and history that encapsulates decades worth of baseball greatness. Now for these timelessly preserved ballparks of old, Gotta look no further than McCormick Field, home of the Asheville Tourists. Now this stadium famously was a filming location for the movie Bull Durham, which is actually my all-time favorite baseball movie. It kind of makes me nostalgic for a time frame that I never lived in. Like I was not a child of the 80s, I was not born in that decade, but every time I watch this movie I just get so nostalgic for that old-time baseball, small town, tiny market kind of era of baseball, and McCormick Field really sort of encapsulates that perfectly. This team's been playing here for a hundred years, I mean 1924 was the first year that McCormick Field saw action and so this ballpark really just kind of feels like a timestamp of that era encapsulating a hundred years of timeless baseball memories I mean just an awesome stadium this is so high on my list of stadiums that I want to go visit and it's kind of a nice segue into saying I have not been to all the stadiums we're going to talk about here today I've only been to a fraction of them but researching some of these ballparks has put them very high on my list of places I want to go visit and the same can be said as well for Jackie Robinson Ballpark in Daytona Florida this is the current home of the Daytona Tortugas and this ballpark has actually seen baseball action since 1914 well over 100 years of baseball history here it originally opened as city island park which is an apt name for the ballpark because it literally sits on an island but the name was changed in 1989 to honor jackie robinson who played here in 1946 for the AAA montreal royals the AAA team for the brooklyn dodgers and it's definitely non-traditional with this kind of obscure seating arrangement it's just a little odd there's kind of like two different sort of grandstands to this but it's a great ballpark nonetheless for baseball history lovers a must visit if you're into timeless baseball history. Jackie Robinson Ballpark definitely offers that. Now for a ballpark that offers history as well as some modern amenities, we gotta go to Redding, Pennsylvania, home of the Redding Fight and Fills. First Energy Field was built in 1951 and this is often regarded as one of the best AA stadiums. It is constantly setting attendance records for the AA level and First Energy Field regards itself as America's best ballpark. It's got modern amenities that include a pool and a plaza level feature live concerts just an awesome atmosphere to be at with those crazy Reading fight and fills fans yeah first energy field super high on my list it's shocking to know that this stadium was built in 1951 because it looks so sleek and modern but on the opposite end of that we can go to Vancouver the only minor league team north of the border we can check out a Canadians game at Nat Bailey Stadium also built in 1951, and this kind of shows a little bit more of its age, uh, definitely in comparison to Reading, Pennsylvania. However, it does have some new seats along the third baseline and out there in left field, kind of mixing the old with the new. But this ballpark, along with McCormick Field in Asheville, is kind of the first thing I think about when I'm thinking about that kind of old grandstand looking minor league ballpark it just has that charm to it something about the pine trees in the outfield and just kind of the overhanging grandstand with the pillars really just gives me that minor league old time charm to it it's really hard to describe but if you've been there and you, if you experienced a ballpark like this you just know it when you see it and vancouver nat bailey stadium it just offers that i love it but i'd argue that one of the best old stadiums in minor league baseball it's got to be modern woodman park home of the quad city river bandit in Davenport, Iowa. This ballpark, believe it or not, was built in 1931, but just look how modern and sleek it looks. I mean, it is just such a family-friendly, fun-loving ballpark, often touted as one of the best in minor league baseball, despite being about 100 years old. It's got that iconic Ferris wheel and carousel out there in the outfield. There's actually six total rides that you can get on. For $15, you can get an all-you-can-ride wristband, which to me, I mean, that's an absolute steal. And it's got this awesome view of the Mississippi River with that bridge right there. If you like that view of the Mississippi River and you're kind of more interested in ballparks that give just a truly unique view, let's take a look at the Brooklyn Cyclones. I mean, much like the River Bandits, the Cyclones here have just this awesome kind of like old school amusement park vibe going on in, in the outfield, which makes sense because this is Coney Island that this ballpark sits right next to. And the Cyclones are actually named after that coaster out there in left field, the Cyclone, just an absolute 
absolutely iconic coaster as well as the parachute jump out there in right field even though it's defunct uh, you know they have no plans of tearing that down just because of what an iconic landmark that it is just an absolutely sick environment to go see a brooklyn cyclones game and if you like coasters in the outfield we got to talk about the altoona curve at people's natural gas field an all-time banger of a ballpark just in the beautiful hills of central pennsylvania that's the skyliner coaster that you can get on during a game but if we're talking about unique views at a ball game we got to take a look at the salt lake bees at smith's ballpark the salt lake bees are just given this incredible view of the wasatch mountains over there in salt lake city just such an intimidating look with those mountains right there it's so impressive. I've been to this ballpark a number of times and that view never gets old. I'm so glad that they built the ballpark in this way, kind of focusing more on the mountains than the downtown city skyline of Salt Lake City. And we will talk about some ballparks with some, some great skyline views, but these mountains here, just so beautiful that never gets old and kind of a newer stadium that takes advantage of its natural surrounding we got to talk about the pensacola blue wahoos a blue wahoo stadium uh, built in 2012 this is widely considered among the best views in minor league baseball with the ocean right there it kind of reminds me of like a mirror imaged oracle park in san francisco with the water kind of being out there in the left field as opposed to in san francisco it's on the right but you're looking right at the ocean just an incredible incredible design choice to put your stadium into what makes your community like so well known pensacola florida a beach town, a beach city right on the Gulf. And yeah, checking out a Blue Wahoos game right from the outfield, super cool. And let's take a look at another ballpark built right on the water. This is Whataburger Field, home of the Corpus Christi Hooks. Just an unreal view of the Harbor Bridge right there in Corpus Christi. I mean, this is kind of a civil engineer's delight if you're here at this ballpark because there's new Harbor Bridge being built, kind of going to give you this incredible view of that bridge from a different perspective in the ballpark. But the current Harbor Bridge kind of out there in right center field, just this incredible dominating landmark there that you see from all aspects of the ballpark and to me it just creates this really super cool anchored look into kind of hooking in what the city is to the ballpark corpus christi obviously a big port town having this huge harbor bridge right there an awesome, awesome view from Whataburger Field. But one of the most unique stadiums in minor league baseball by far has gotta be FNB Field in Harrisburg, home of the Senators, AA for the Nationals. This stadium is literally built on an island, like right in the middle of an island, which is pretty sweet. Depending on where you're sitting in the stadium, you're gonna get some really awesome views of downtown Harrisburg or the Susquehanna River. Just super, super cool environment. But of course, with some minor league markets being larger than others, many teams have opted to put a ballpark using their city skyline as a prominent feature which is probably most true for the Charlotte Knights at Truist Field. This ballpark built in 2014 is probably the best city view in minor league baseball. Actually, I'd argue that it, it absolutely is the best city view. This would feel right at home as a major league ballpark, and you might think it was if it wasn't for the lack of seating. I mean, obviously, it's just smaller because it is a minor league stadium, but I mean, the view that you're getting of downtown Charlotte is second to none. It's just very impressive, and if anything, it's a little intimidating being that close to some of these really tall buildings right there in downtown Charlotte. An unreal stadium with Truist Field. And I'd say the same is true for the Columbus Clippers, AAA for the Cleveland Guardians. Huntington Park offers this view of downtown Columbus, which really has a relatively unknown skyline for those living outside of Ohio. But Huntington Park here in downtown Columbus really lets that skyline shine. A very vibrant city right there in central Ohio. And Huntington Park really makes this look like an attractive place that people would want to go visit. And the same can be said for the Indianapolis Indians at Victory Field. This is the AAA affiliate for the Pirates, so you're kind of noticing a trend most of these downtown views are triple-a teams just because most of them play in bigger cities kind of a larger market here that allow for that downtown view and yeah indianapolis is killing it here the jw marriott kind of dominates the skyline view over there from left field but i mean i can't imagine a cooler place to watch a minor league baseball game this kind of gives me vibes of the sky dome in toronto having that hotel right there in center field just super cool way to take in a game and yeah that hotel right there is just awesome indianapolis is killing it and let's take a look at one more triple a stadium here this is the sacramento river cats just this awesome view of one of the most iconic bridges in the country the bright yellow tower bridge actually uh sutter health park has a playground that kind of emulates some of the skyline views of sacramento with including a playset that looks just like the tower bridge it's just super cool obviously though it's too small for major league baseball like as i'm facilitating a team so it's gonna be interesting to watch how the oakland a's interact with this ballpark and call it home starting in 2025 but i did want to highlight one more ballpark in this kind of like skyline chapter of this video and that's the fort wayne 10 caps which is 
punching way above its weight as a high A team for the San Diego Padres. Absolutely knocking it out of the park. This is just a gorgeous ballpark with a view of just a classic mid-sized Midwest city in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Awesome, awesome ballpark. I mean, some ballparks just have a timeless vibe and it's kind of hard to explain unless you've been there, but it's a formula that mixes up the best of an old time feel with modern amenities. And you'll find those city views that we've been talking about combined with usually brick facades, open plazas, fantastic food and drink options, and just kind of like an endless charm in general. Many of these things we've already highlighted with some of these parks we've talked about in this video already, but these ones we're going to talk about include some of my favorites that I visited in person or else are very high on my must visit list. So starting with these classic vibe ballparks, we got to talk about the Durham Bulls, Durham Athletic Park built in 1995, arguably one of the most well-known minor league parks in existence thanks to Bull Durham, a movie that we mentioned a little bit ago with the Asheville Tourists. It's filled with iconic landmarks from that movie, like the iconic hit the bull win stake sign. And as far as I know, it's still the only minor league ballpark with a brewery on site in the Bull Durham Beer Company. Although I would love to know if that's still a thing because they have not updated any of their socials since May of 2023. So it's hard to find some good info on this, but is the Bull Durham Beer Company still a thing? I don't know. Leave a comment. Let me know. Next up, I want to talk about Dickie Stevens Park in North Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm being maybe a little biased here because this is a personal favorite of mine. I have been to this ballpark many, many times over the years, but it's just got this endless charm to it with that view of Little Rock, Arkansas, right over the Arkansas River. There's a live organist. I know some of these other ballparks have that as well, and including some of the ones that we've already mentioned, but just having that live organist really adds to this feel of an old time baseball experience. It's just so cool to see in here live in person. I love this ballpark for so many reasons. Next up, I want to focus on the Louisville Bats. This ballpark is so cool. I mean, it's got a great view of downtown Louisville, as well as the Ohio River and some of those bridges that cross over into Illinois. I guess I'm just a sucker for a cool bridge view. But one of the things that really sets this apart is sort of that front door, quote unquote, entrance to the ballpark, which is actually an old rail freight depot. So it kind of serves as an area offering retail space and restaurants. There's supposed to be a great brewery over there called Against the Grain that looks awesome to check out. And I just love that integration of that ballpark into the city, kind of incorporating some of those old historic elements, some of those things that make Louisville, Louisville. Bringing those things into your stadium is just a, it's such a cool way to anchor that ballpark into your city. It's also one of the reasons why the Memphis Redbirds at AutoZone Park is so high on my list of great ballparks in minor league baseball. That home plate entrance in downtown, it, it truly is one of the best in all of baseball. It's just super cool when you can be in a downtown area, hanging out with your buddies, drinking a beer, exploring some of the history, and then just walk right up to the home plate entrance on the next block, having these ballparks built into the fabric of the city that aren't out in just some suburb surrounded by parking. It just There's some cities that just do it right, and Memphis is definitely one of those, and I would argue that Tulsa, the Tulsa Drillers at one OK Field also do this fantastic as well. And I mean, I often dunk on Tulsa for how they sort of like choked off their downtown with interstates, but they really built this ballpark right. I mean, it's right smack dab in the historic Greenwood district. There's tons of bars. There's history around every corner. And this is just an awesome place to take in a game. Change the name. This is not one OK Field. This is one pretty excellent field, I would say. Another really well-known ballpark is the Isotopes Ballpark. This is also called Rio Grande Credit Union Field, which is a big mouthful, but uh, basically this is the home of the Al Albuquerque Isotopes, which is a place that really just knows how to have fun. I mean, there's Simpson statues and references around the ballpark because this was kind of named after a Simpsons reference to begin with. So it's it's kind of like a quirky ballpark and it kind of keeps that vibe. We'd like even the center field dimensions are just weird and quirky. I know we've already said quirky, but it, this really just kind of does feel like one of those super unique, super charming, really weird ballparks. And I mean that in the best way possible. The Albuquerque Isotopes, great place. I would absolutely love to see a game here someday. Probably one of the more unique ballparks we're going to talk about on this list today is Frisco Field in Frisco, Texas. This is home of the Frisco Rough Riders. It's definitely different from the rest of these on this kind of classic feel ballparks because it's built to look more like a pavilion style, especially on the concourse. It's kind of got these like separate pavilion buildings that sort of surround the concourse. It's a very interesting look, but I really like it just for that, just kind of being like unique and different. It's got a lazy river out there in the outfield, which you really can't go wrong with something like that. Another shout out to the Toledo Mud Hens at Fifth Third Field, which is just weird to say. It's one of the weirdest. I know it's named after a bank, but it's just a terrible name, I gotta be honest. But the ballpark itself, again, punching very much above its weight in kind of mid-sized Toledo, Ohio. We could have also put this in ballparks that have a great city view, but I just love the kind of vibe that this gives. It was built in 2002, and it really just holds that kind of like classic ballpark feel to it, where it's just built so well into the city that it surrounds. I just love this ballpark. And many cities have embraced these ballparks 
ballparks as more than just a host for baseball because they serve as a community anchor point that lets people gather to relax, socialize, and just have fun. And as newer parks are built, teams seek to keep the fan experience at the highest priority. And while most ballparks offer a little bit of something for everyone, some truly go above and beyond to create an atmosphere of nonstop fun with kind of like a futuristic aesthetic. Kind of the first one that comes to mind for me is First Horizon Park built in 2015. This is home of the Nashville Sounds and it's got one of the most iconic scoreboards in baseball with that guitar. I mean, it's just so fitting for Nashville. It's perfect in every way. But this ballpark also offers a lounge and bar area uh, complete with a mini golf course, cornhole, ping pong, foosball, shuffleboard. It's in an area called the Bandbox, which just creates this like very chill, laid back environment and kind of like a party vibe in Nashville, which is fitting for a city like Nashville to have something like this for people to hang out and gather, drink, relax, have fun, socialize. This is just such a cool ballpark, First Horizon Park. Definitely a ballpark of the modern day that kind of keeps the fan experience at the top priority. And the same can definitely be said as well with Las Vegas ballpark, home of the Vegas Aviators. Now, built in 2019, this is definitely a little bit more upscale and modern than most minor league ballparks, which is fitting for Las Vegas, where every new development is catered to world-class entertainment. It's kind of sleek like an airplane, uh, which is also fitting because this uh, the ownership of the Vegas Aviators is the Howard Hughes Corporation, the very famous aviator and film director. Las Vegas Ballpark has luxury suites, it's got club seats, a pool, and it's got seats with breathable mesh material to combat the heat, which is essential in Southern Nevada. Now, a ballpark that's kind of stripped down a little bit from some of the glitz and glamour of Nashville and Vegas is actually in Wichita, Kansas. This is Riverfront Stadium, home to the AA affiliate of the Minnesota Twins. This ballpark was built in 2021, and it's got a great view of downtown Wichita. It's got a unique emphasis on artwork. Kind of everywhere you go in the stadium, you can see like original art pieces that just look really sleek and neat and oftentimes pertain both to the city of Wichita and the state of Kansas as a whole. Just a very clean, modern ballpark that was built for the fan experience first, and it's gorgeous. Wichita did a great job with this, as well as fellow Texas League team Amarillo with Hodgetown in 2019 when this was built. Uh, first of all, just one of the coolest ballpark names in all of baseball. This is that literally the ballpark is called Hodgetown, and I just got it. It's super cool. It's got this massive Art Deco exterior, which is just absolutely gorgeous. It's right here in smack dab center of downtown Amarillo, Texas, and they did a fantastic fantastic job at incorporating this into the facade, the design of downtown Amarillo. Just a really cool stadium that's doing a lot of favors for the great and proud city of uh, Amarillo, Texas. Yeah. I definitely want to get out here to this stadium someday. Another great double-A stadium here is Duncan Park, one of the Hartford Yard Goats, which first of all is just one of the coolest names in minor league baseball. This is uh, definitely one of the coolest designs and names in all of MILB. And Duncan Park is considered to be among one of the most fun stadiums. It's located right in the smack dab center of downtown Hartford. It's a beautiful looking ballpark that's just a, an absolute fan favorite. And uh, yeah, it's complete with an actual petting zoo with goats. I mean, amazing. Another ballpark high on my list to visit is Southwest University Park, home of the El Paso Chihuahuas. This is AAA for the San Diego Padres, which is a step above the team that I work for, the AA San Antonio Missions for the San Diego Padres. Yeah, the El Paso Chihuahuas play right in the middle of El Paso, Texas. It's the, probably the only ballpark that you can look at. And in fact, I, I will say that on record, it is the only minor league ballpark that you can visit where you can sit and look into a whole other country, depending on where you're sitting. You can look down into Mexico, which is just really cool. I love the view of the mountains that you get in this ballpark as well. I mean, there's just nothing like a West Texas sunset. They're just built different. It's hard to explain, but you'll get that in El Paso at a Chihuahuas game. And you'll also get a ton of fun and entertainment. Big Dog House, right there kind of out in center field, is sort of the benchmark for entertainment in this ballpark. It is four stories of bars and retail, complete, of course, with the woof top deck at the very top of the Big Dog House. It's a uh, woof top, not rooftop. Amazing. Must visit. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to go here someday. And I wanted to uh, round out this list here with the Birmingham Barons at Regents Field. This kind of replaced, quote unquote, Rickwood Field, which is the oldest ballpark in uh, North America, to my knowledge. Now, there will be a game there at Rickwood in June between the Cardinals and Giants, which is going to be so sick to check out. It's just going to be littered with history and baseball nostalgia. I'm so excited to check that out. And when the Birmingham Barons moved here in 2013, you know, they really did a great job in honoring all the, all the history in uh, the great city of Birmingham, specifically with their baseball team. And Regions Field here, I mean, it's just got this gorgeous brick and steel exterior, complete with that massive Birmingham sign out there. It's just a great backdrop to take a photo of uh, when you approach this stadium. It's just a gorgeous, open air stadium that to me just it really does a perfect job of blending kind of the history of Birmingham 
with the present and future of where this team is headed. I mean, the Birmingham Barons, they've been in this city for a very long time. And they're here to stay. Just an unreal stadium. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure and like and subscribe. Let me know which of these parks is your favorite or which ones you'd like to see in a follow-up. Appreciate you guys hanging out, and we will see you in a future video.